Hi, my name is Noah. I'm a year 3 medical student currently studying at NUS Medicine. And recently I got a few comments asking me to describe the application process to get into medicine, which is what gave me the idea to make this video, where I want to talk a little bit about my personal journey starting from secondary school all the way to now. So after I tell this story, I also want to answer a few questions about the application process that I had at the time, which I think would be useful to anyone who is looking to apply as well. So let's get into the story. So the story begins when I was in secondary 4, which was in 2016. And at the time, I only had a small curiosity towards medicine that was driven primarily by the Asian parent mindset, where, you know, being a doctor is supposed to be a well-paying and reliable job. So that's one of the only reasons why I even decided to take a look into medicine as a career. So to do this, at the end of the year holidays, I decided to uh, take on an internship at my family doctor's clinic. And so for a week, I would watch how he diagnosed and treated and interacted and as well as comforted his patients. So after the week-long experience, my impression of medicine at the time was, eh, I would say that I wasn't disinterested but neither had my curiosity grown into an interest or an inclination. But I think that's okay because you can't really expect a 16 year old to know what he wants to do for the rest of his life, right? So anyways, that was like the, only, the one and the only uh, medicine related internship that I did in all my secondary school as well as JC years because um, getting an internship or a job shadowing opportunity at a hospital is actually kind of difficult especially if you don't have any connections to your parents or friends. So moving on to JC, my actual inclination towards medicine only really began in about year 2 which some may consider to be a little bit late because those who are already interested in medicine would have had an extra year to stack up their CV with things like leadership positions, community work and other co-curricular activities. So unlike them, with the remaining year left, I did not really have much time to do all of those things, especially since I had to juggle my studying commitments since the IB examination was coming up in a few years. So instead, what I did was to set up a group with some of my best friends at the time, who were, and they were also interested in getting into medicine, and what we did was to share news about Singapore's healthcare landscapes on topics such as innovation and new policies and in general just to help each other gain a better understanding of the healthcare system so that we will be better prepared for the interviews. In addition to that, we also like to discuss the application process so that we had a nice support group to talk about the things that we were worried about. We also eventually went on to create some community work project so that we could at least have something to reflect on as we wrote our personal statements and thought about why we wanted to do medicine. Miraculously, all of us actually made it into medicine and we are still a close group of friends until this day. Moving on to the application process, which for me began in 2019, it might be important for the guys to note that most of the application process actually takes place when you have already enlisted, which is why it might be a little bit hard for you to juggle the entire administrative process while you are spending 5 days in camp and coming out shag on the weekends, which is why I would recommend that you Complete the things that you can before you actually enlist. So some of these things would include your personal statement or even just trying to understand the application process as a whole so that you know the deadlines you have to meet and you can better prepare for that. So after the initial application, shortlisted applicants will be invited for interview as well as a quick test that you have to do. But that one's not really an academic thing that you need to study for, but rather it's more of a questionnaire on what you would do in certain, certain uh, ethical situations. So assuming that everything goes well, you will be able to enroll sometime in June or July, and you will begin your freshman orientation program and finally start your medical school life. So now that I've finished telling my story of how I got into medicine, I just want to take some time to answer the questions that I had while applying for medicine at the time. So the first question that I'll be answering is, are internships important to getting into medicine? Well, the short answer to that is yes, but actually no. And I say that because having an internship was never really a requirement, but I think it's a good bonus to have. The main purpose of an internship, I think, is more for you to get a greater understanding of what the job is like and whether it would appeal to you, whether it's something that you could consider doing for the rest of your life. So how then can we apply the knowledge that we gain from 
uh, medical related internship to our actual application process. Well, I think that during the internship itself, you should probably note down the certain aspects of clinical practice that personally intrigue you or make you more inclined to do medicine. And those are things that you can expound upon in your personal statement as well as your interview in answering the question, why medicine? So I would say that during the internship, you don't really need to gain clinical knowledge, but it's pretty important for you to reflect on how this impacts your decision to do medicine. The second question is, how do I get an internship that is medicine related? Well, the first way that you can do it is to Google job shadowing opportunities. And I believe that some hospitals actually offer these things that, and you need to apply for them. But honestly, I'm not sure whether it's very easy to get into. Personally, it never really worked out for me. And that's why I would recommend the second method more, which is to ask your parents if they have any friends who are doctors, or if they know any doctors that you could apply for an internship with. For example, when I got an internship with my GP, all I did was simply email him asking if there were any spots available and if he was willing to teach me. The third question I want to answer is, is community work, leadership positions and co-curricular achievements important to get into medicine? Well, to be completely honest, I'm not really sure how much the interviewers would value these achievements, although it's, it is nice to have something to write on your CV. But I believe what the main purpose of these things are is to give you some substantiation when you make a claim about yourself. So for example, in the interview, if you said something like, I understand the importance of teamwork as a leader, you would have to substantiate it with something like, as I learned through my experience as a student council member, for example. So yeah, that's the main point of it, is to substantiate whatever claims you make about yourself. The next question I want to answer is how important is my subject combi and JC for getting into medicine? So if you look at the website, the requirement for getting into medicine is actually just to have higher math, uh, chemistry as well as one science, be it biology or physics. I myself am a physics student and I don't believe that there's any discrimination in the selection criteria for that, that would prefer biology students over physics students. You may then ask, does being a physics student disadvantage you in med school? The answer to that is, not really. In the first few weeks of med school, it may be a little bit difficult to adjust because a lot of the beginning lectures tend to be on things like the cell structure as well as cellular processes. However, I'm quite confident that after one or two months, everyone starts learning on a level playing ground because uh, there's, we are being taught completely new content. So I don't think you have anything to worry about as a physics student. So that brings me to the end of the video. If you have any other questions for me, feel free to comment them down below and I'll respond to them if I have time. Bye!